So this is part three to the found mosaic project. So the goal of part three is to get to a point where you're about two thirds of the way completed with arranging and gluing down your pieces of your mosaic, um, all your found objects. And so at this point, I am approaching about the two thirds mark here. I have most of my main focal point of my B glued down here. Um, now that this is starting to dry, I'm noticing that there are some spaces where I can add some more pieces to fill in any gaps. This wing is looking pretty good. It's pretty consistent. This one has a few more spaces. And so in order to keep that balance and symmetry of things being the same on either side, I want to fill in this one a little bit so that it looks more similar to this side. So that's something that I'm going to go in and adjust as I work on this. But I have my main focal point mostly completed. Things have changed a little bit from my sketch, and so if yours changes a little bit, um, that's totally fine. Actually, it looks like a piece of my bee's leg actually came off here, so I'll have to go in and add another piece so that it's the same length. Um, but the piece I had on there was not quite as long as my sketch. Same with this leg here. It's a little bit different than where I had drawn out my sketch. So as you're working on this part, if things change a little bit, that's totally fine. Um, from your sketch, it might vary a little bit. Um, you don't necessarily have to be creating your found object mosaic on your sketch. I'm just doing it in my sketchbook here on sketch paper. Um, so I'm just making it right on top of the sketch that I have. Um, so I'm continuing on with it here and I am starting to work on the background now that I have my main subject created. And so I'm creating these honeycomb shapes that I have in this pattern or rhythm in the background. And I really want my shapes to be consistent. I want the colors to change, or the values of all these yellow and gold colors to change a little bit. But I want the size and the shape of my um, different honeycombs in my design here to be pretty consistent throughout the whole thing. So what I've actually done is I've made myself a little template. I cut out a hexagon of about the size and shape that I want. And what I'm doing to make sure that stays consistent is I'm drawing, I'm tracing out this shape on the paper that I want to use in different colors and values for my background. So I've chose a couple different types of values and colors of kind of a gold, bronzy kind of color. And so I've used this template to sketch out and trace out these different shapes. So now I can cut these out and add them to my other hexagons in the background here. I'm going to do the same thing with this chocolate box wrapper that I have here. I can just find an area that I want to use, place my little template on it, and trace that out. So that is not something that you necessarily have to do, but it's a neat little trick to keep consistent shapes if you have a design where you have a certain area where you want really consistent sizes of your shapes or consistent types of shapes. So now on any of these, I can just cut those out and add them to my background. And as you can see in my background here, these are changing a little bit. When I sketched it out, my hexagons ended up a little bit bigger up at the top here, and then they ended up getting a little smaller down at the bottom. But once I have all of these cut out, it will change a little bit since they'll be <clears throat> a consistent size and shape. So they might not fully line up with my sketch that I have here, but that's totally fine. I will have to cut down some smaller shapes for these little corner areas in all the small spaces around the B. Um, but that is where I am so far with my found object mosaic. I'm going to be finishing up this background area and working towards a point where I'm about two-thirds of the way completed.